Have you ever seen copper metal clay and wondered what it is and if you should try it? In this video, I'm going to answer those questions and show you my results and conclusions with this very interesting material. Be sure to stick around to the end to see my most successful copper clay creation. Hey there, Sandy here. Welcome to another creative video at keepsakecrafts.net. This is copper clay. It is not copper colored polymer clay, but is actually very finely powdered copper mixed with water and an organic binder into a malleable clay substance. It can be shaped how you like, then fired with a torch or a kiln. More on that in a minute. You can find metal clays also in silver, gold, bronze, and other materials. A couple years ago, I opened this package of silver clay and was able to use a creme brulee torch to successfully fire several silver pieces that I still wear and love. Fast forward to 2023 and I finally decided to open this package of copper clay. I shaped a whole bunch of jewelry findings using the exact same techniques you would for silver metal clay, but that's where the similarities end. The creme brulee torch didn't even come close to properly firing the copper, so I bought a bigger torch. By this point, I had watched every video I could find and read every article online about torch firing copper clay. I'll link to them in the description box so you can take a look for yourself. It was pretty frustrating and discouraging to attempt piece after piece only to have them break and crumble. Then I switched to an even bigger torch. This time, melting a copper test strip like this one right through my stainless steel mesh. In fact, I think it's stuck on there forever. But the piece next to it fired at the same time was still not properly sintered. Sintering simply means that the molecules have melted to the point where they have bonded together into a solid piece of metal. One thing that I did find helpful was to use an infrared thermometer to check the actual temperature of the piece while I was firing it, which I brought it up to the temperatures that the directions said around 900, 950 degrees, because much like curing polymer clay, it needs to be held at a certain temperature for a certain amount of time in order for the particles to bond. So knowing what the piece looks like at the correct firing temperature gave me a very clear idea of the color I needed to hold it at. And I actually had one successful test strip firing that I was able to bend into a U shape. But even this wasn't very strong as it broke when I tried to bend it back. If you look inside, you can see crumbly bits rather than solid metal. Sandy here with a quick interruption to ask you a question. Do you love videos like this that give you helpful information about creative supplies? If so, you're in the right place. Consider becoming a patron to support this YouTube channel and get bonus videos every month. Check out all the details at patreon.com slash Sandy Sewin. Okay, back to the video. I still think there are two kinds of people who should try copper clay. If you have a kiln, I would say absolutely yes. By the way, if you have a kiln, let me know. I would love to mail my pieces to you to be properly fired. And if you are positively dying to work in copper clay and are persistent and willing to try and experiment, maybe fail a lot before you succeed, then yes, give it a try. It's always interesting to experiment with new materials. I'm certain it's me and there's something wrong with my method and understanding. Other folks have shown they can make lovely torch-fired copper clay pieces. Personally, I found the process frustrating enough that it's not worth my time to continue to attempt it. My most successful pieces were the test strip that I could bend a bit before it broke and this round piece. It's sintered just partially, but only after being terribly melted and deformed. It started out looking like this one, and yeah, they shrink a little, but I, I don't think I was supposed to melt a hole in it or uh, deform it. So how could the torch have been too hot and yet too cool at the same time? I'm not sure what's up with that. With the money I spent on torches and fuel, I could have bought another package of silver clay. In fact, I might buy another package of silver clay just to make myself feel better. Now that you have this information, you definitely want to dive into the details of the much easier to fire silver metal clay with this two-part series I put together for you. See you in the next video.